Ravi Lai? Yeah. Got it. Hi, warriors. This is Suman. And it's been long, I know, after one month I'm coming live. But I'm coming with a very, very uh, vibrant personality. You can say next generation youth. It's full of energy. And uh, the journey she has gone through being so young is amazing and inspiring. And she's the amazing, good looking, beautiful diva, I'll say stunning diva, uh, growing uh, youth with a lot of dreams and visions in her life. She's a good writer. She's a, a dancer. She is also in a profession where she's going to fight for justice for many people down the line, we never know. Uh, when will be in need of her to speak for us. And she's a fighter in her own life against deadly cancer called lymphoma. So here I present Suchanki Gupta, who is presently located in Ujjain. She's a lawyer. She's doing a final year uh, studies in law segment. And she's a daughter of a very respectable judge. So here I welcome Suchanki all the way from Ujjain, India, to share her heart out. Suchanki, welcome. And hi, share hi, hi, Suman, ma'am. Thank you so much for all those kind words and such a warm welcome. Uh, I I do not know really. I mean, if all of that is really, really like going to be there for the long run. But as of now, all you have said. So I am Suchanki, 22 years old. And I am pursuing law from Delhi University, final year. I, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma the same time, July month, last year. And this is the same month this year. I am alive and thrive. I have emerged victorious out of that. So, Suchanki, so as we know that why we are here, uh, we, we are here to share yes. your heart out to the warriors to inspire. I would like to know how was your life before being diagnosed? Obviously, you were young, you are a young chap, I and mean, a young girl growing with a lot of dreams and visions and a lot of things must be, your life must be so like, you know, jaise hoti hai sab ki, is umar mein. So, jab ye kaise aapko pata chala aur kya impact ki aapdi life mein? How okay. it impacted you? How you handled? Yes, all of that. So many questions. So, I'll just go with, so now. when oh, Sorry, go I'm one by one. Yes, I have one can say we can divide our life like AC and BC after cancer, before cancer, and then during the cancer also, so like three phases of one's life. So it was last year, all of us were facing the pandemic. It was like the second wave was a peak. The same same day, all 8th of July, I went for my vaccination and it was a cancer hospital, government one. Like God always sends you some or other signs. It's just that they are, he's asking for you to look up to them. And you have to be very, very vital to get all of that. So it was last year where I got the vaccination done. And then the, all of a sudden, my taste buds went uh, and I used to have fever. I was also writing my semester exam at the same time. And there was some lump, lymph nodes over my neck or under my armpit. So I, I, I was thinking it's probably because I've been writing constantly for my exams. We had back-to-back -back semester lined up. So I thought it's probably because of that and it's nothing else and it's exhaustion. But again, not in my life, I have not been able to write 40 pages for three hours. And that time I was feeling a lot of tiredness. So there was loss of taste, also loss of weight as well. But all of us are going through so much. So I thought the pain is universal for everyone. People are losing their loved ones. We are all in this together. And it's just one of the, those side effects. There's nothing else. I mean, who would have comprehended cancer? Nobody thinks of it at that age. Not It's not about age again. When I got, I, I realized that it's a myth that young people do not get it. Now with the time I'm meeting people, I'm getting to know that yes, it's, it's just a myth that that's to be busted. The environment, culture, and lifestyle, and whatnot, I have no idea what exactly the reason the cause for the same, but cancer do not see if you're one year of age or if you're 50 plus, it'll just, just get into you, your life, your loved ones. It's just not like a battle. It's definitely one of the physical toughest battle, but with it, it's also a mind battle. So 
Yes, that's how I got. They were the early symptoms. And then I was like, I have to write my exams. I cannot just go on sitting and not be able to write. Though they were online, but I have to complete my uh, papers also. So I went up to a doctor here in Ujjain. And Ujjain is not a place which is like having a lot of medical sources as well. So I would say I got to be really lucky in my case. I went up to the doctor. He gave me a course for five days. And if the fever did not recite or anything, then they said we'll go for further tests. So I went up to him after five days because there was no change. There were night sweats constant. There were constant uh, fever also. But uh, also we thought it can be COVID, but nobody in the family got infected. So I was like, it's not COVID, definitely. So it's something else. So then they did uh, the NFMC and they said it's TB. So we were like, I was, my father was again, is it even queryable? I was like, of course, Papa, TB is queryable, chill. So it was like that. So we went there, we got it checked. Uh, they said, okay, TB takes six, nine months, of course. But in the evening time, doctor called up my father. He's like, no, you have to come over here. We need to talk about something. So I figured out it's something serious. And also the time, the two years, I was sure that something would, like, you know, after so I was like, something would happen. But to me, of course, I did not anticipate that coming. But such is life. You do not know what's coming your way. So we went up there in the evening and then they are like, uh, it's probably not what we were thinking. It's not cancer, but just for the satisfaction mentally. Just, just come for a small operation, which is biopsy. And I was like, why can't we do it after a week when I'm done with my exams? I mean, why operation everything in like a fuss in between of my exams? But uh, they said straight that you can either choose between your life or between your exams and parents are like parents. So we went for the test biopsy next day. Uh, it was in indoor because Ujjain did not have all of that because they said you might have cardiac arrest or stuff. Just refer yourself to indoor or Delhi. So we went there, then got our biopsy done. And it's just, uh, I got my biopsy done. And there, they said the report will come from next three to four days. And they send Bombay and they'll come after a few days. And we're like, okay, we can wait. But there's, um, oh, no, someone like, uh, like an uncle who is also, who was also my treating oncologist, Dr. Taran, he said, please go to Bombay. It is so and so. And we are, since you are very young and you have a future ahead, we do not want any risk or anything. You just go there. So we went to Tata immediately. The very next day we went there. And uh, there the oncologist told everything. You have all of this and this and this can happen and all of that. And then they gave me a treatment and I took the plan and got back home here in Ujjain and I was taking my chemos from indoor. So yeah, this is the how I actually started the symptoms, the diagnosis and how I started my treatment. It started on 6th of August. It was six chemo, my, my treatment included six chemo, uh, chemo cycles, just like 12 rounds, 12 rounds of chemo cycle. I had that and I got done with that this year, January end. So yeah, it was this long process like how this affected your life you know as a growing child youth teenager or going in your early 20s i'm not sure what your age and i'm yes. not supposed to ask yes. no no permission so obviously obviously you are a growing diva i'll say young girl so how did it affect it yeah, you know and there must be times when you're going through session when you must be breaking how you pushed yourself what kept you going ahead yes as i said the time was pandemic we were all going through something universal it was it was very vulnerable to see i mean people losing their loved ones and everything we were all all and with it the cancer so as i told i was writing my exams i was like very very grateful i was like thank god i am okay my loved ones are okay it's all it's like a miracle because there was no family who wasn't being affected with this global cause the last year. But then when I my diagnosis came, of course, but again, I think, I, I guess God endowed me, endowed me with best of the things. I, I had the power of acceptance. Uh, the moment I got, I, I knew it's something. So I was like, okay, so so and so has happened to me. All right, I'll, I'll get through. The only difficult part, there were so many difficult parts. And honestly, I'd say, cancer was fun until, I got into the treatment. The treatment started hitting really, really hard. Because when the diagnosis came, we went to Bombay, Tata, all the tests were there, they were done. 
solely because you are just alone on your own, the patient. They send nobody else with you. So I was like, okay, God is taking my test even without syllabus. So of course, I was writing my exams back then. I had so many exams to give lined up that previous year. Admit cards were out there and I had no idea. I lost the track of exams, exam dates and everything because now the new track I used to start keeping were of my chemo days. Like, okay, after 14 days, my and then there were so many learnings out of it. The most of it I draw it, so chunky, you cannot plan your life. Like I was like, okay, five down the line, I will be this, I'll be this, I'll be that, we'll be doing that with this, with that. But then what happened? You have cancer and you are not in your powers to actually control your future. I think I was rushing into things too fast. And even my friends told me that God, God gave you a break because you were never going to give yourself one. So that's another thing I learned out of that journey that take one step at a time and control what is in your hands. So what I had was my treatment and I was told that please keep, stay happy, eat healthy. This is the key to recovery and also the treatment. If my treatment has worked in my favor, it's because of the positivity that I had. And of course, my family members, my friends, they kept me going. But, uh, I kept it to the close people initially because I, I did not want it to be out there because during the treatment, you did not want so much so happening in your life because already so much was going around in the world. I was like, let my world take my time and then work accordingly. So there were people who knew about it. Like after 15 days or a month, there was some other friend who was, how how lucky I got to be there. In the entire pandemic, nobody could, could see or meet their loved ones. And when I had cancer, I had most of my friends at my place. We used to chill, we used to dance, we used to watch movies together and everything. So in this way, I think those six to eight months of the stuff, rigorous treatment, they just, uh, they just really passed. And then, of course, after recovery, uh, sorry, after the treatment, the recovery process, it's something you know. You know you have been through so much, now you can do it. So yes, you keep it going. So it's definitely the love of your loved ones, your parents, and the best thing, the God. I mean, God. I they, So when initially it got diagnosed, I guess I must have told the power I had was I accept it. One night when I was in Bombay, I wasn't able to sleep. So I went up to the washroom. I saw the mirror and I told to myself that I am the hero of my life and for my family that I have and the family I want in my future. I have to live for that. So then there was no going back. I mean, of course, you have your days, you have your breakdowns. Definitely they're way tough. But then you have to rise. You have to shine. You have to admit, okay, so and so has happened. All right. But you will go on. You will keep on going. And that's what I did. And here we are alive and thriving. So, like, what was your learning out of all of this experience? Like, apart from, as you said, power of acceptance kept you going, your friends kept you going, the support. So, do you think how important the support system for a warrior is like? Yeah. Is like uh, what gaps? Did you see any gaps? While, uh, no. Like, you were blessed with the support. So but as a warrior, were, were there any challenges you you saw the day these are the gaps for a warrior which yes, should be filled yes uh telling about the gaps before so i have been very lucky fortunate in my case like beyond blessed but i think i still i'm figuring out but i'm very sure one one purpose god saved me and made me go through this misery personally was to see others suffering like from very close I mean, you are there, Tata is like a hub for cancer patients. It's like a temple. You see a kid of one year going through chemotherapy, so you have no right to ask God, why me? So it was never in my case, I never even questioned why me? I'm like, okay, this is happening, I'll get through it. I'm like, something big is meant for me. Like, okay, I'll be going and giving talks, I'll be writing the book of my life. So it's pretty much chill. But with what I saw was, uh, it's definitely a very uh, texting process not just mentally, physically, but also financially. I, have, I, I, come, I talk about it from a very privileged background, but when you see the process, I think people, they go to different places and doctors, not just doctors, it's not doctors, I would say. The resources and the diagnosis, it gets very delayed and it comes to their lives then. So early detection is the key, I would say. So one thing is watching the symptoms very much. So this is one thing I saw there when I was in Tata that there were so many people and they were all like, hum to ab khatam ho hai. Pe rehne ke liye bhi nahi hai. and chal ye wo. so I used to feel God, I am I, I got saved, but please, please, like one prayer, one prayer, say a prayer every day. This is one of the strong messages I would say. Like keep 
cancer patients in in thoughts in prayers in whichever way you can because the suffering is very very real this is one thing and when we but 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 this is just the thing you have to keep going there are our resources with it i'll also tell that we are glad people say that cancer actually like takes away time i would say cancer actually gives you time to actually look into your life because when you know you have cancer so many people live with chronic cancer chronic illness right so they know ki, okay they might go anytime so they do all the things they can think about the people who actually have diabetes or maybe heart or cardiac arrest or some met some accident their entire life goes in a fraction of second so i think in this way we have we know how it is but i will still say that we need more and more resources there has to be more and more support groups this is one thing i have seen in the hospital if talking about personally then even the slightest of a compliment coming from a stranger or even a friend of yours can actually light up your mood you know so while going through my treatment i had my friends overseas someone giving your time to you can actually mean a lot to you we do not need temporary we do not need so many gifts or anything just give us your time someone to listen to someone to understand and yes went I, out. I mean, you went out exactly because no and then i realized i think the cancer patient are the right people who can actually understand your your um, pain that you go through because i once told my mother also you cannot understand what i am going through because chemos are being injected in my body i am feeling you know there used to be time where i would not even able to care up i could not move eat cell in my body would ache because of the side effects the injections i was taking all of that there was so much and then your life has come to a pause you were you you are someone who i movement then i used to start to appreciate the power of movement and everything more because i am someone who is used to moving here and then everything and now suddenly you are on your bed you are like throwing up you are your appetite is gone all of this so much so happens so i think it's definitely a very very tough time and to see your loved ones go through all of this is definitely much much tougher than something you're going through to see your parents walking like walking running on their feet to for here and there for everything so this aches so but in my case i had all the support of the people and everyone the people have been more and more so kind and my journey started in a very unknown place like bombay i was with a family who was unknown to me but they turned out to be like a home away from home so i have been blessed in my case with great team of doctors amazing set of friends and the best family and of course almighty almighty blessing is always always shared on me so even when i wasn't able to pray i think prayers of the people who were doing silent prayers and everything actually worked on my case so here i am like a miracle all of so i i think i have all the reasons to pay back i mean i have no reason to just not be able sitting and just like i i i guess i have no reason to not be able to share my story and do my part i am really looking forward for all of these and i i have been observing you used to make a lot of reels during your journey uh like what motivated you to do so like you know was it a way of stress bursting your stress out or sharing the message what was that okay so one the, i have never been this person who would actually like show that i am i am in that much strength when i am not there were definitely days when i was low very few people knew about it or maybe even uh, like my family that was fine but i've never been a person who actually glorify you know someone because i think some that's something that is that cannot be romanticized okay but when you are happy your hearts want to it was the company of my friends and my people who kept me going but also if you talk about the inside story that positivity is a real thing manifestation is a real thing so it was a constant battle the more negative you go the more you are bad ridden you do not want to do things but when the more you push yourself through okay this cycle has been done only you are left for this many chemos you are already halfway there so it's like my incentive for yourself okay so when so good is going to happen i of course used to have uh, such days where i would my reports won't turn out to up to the mark and i would like now what it will be delayed and what is something happens your mind wanders here and there because it's human mind right but my family made sure my friends made sure i was totally occupied by most of the time do not in studies but in some other thing so art kept me going music kept me going many my friends kept me going so that was a thing entire thing with my journey that yes so i mean those those tough time aasan ho jate hain aapke matlab dosto ke sath to achhe logon ke sath bura waqt bhi aasan se kat jata hai aisa hota hai katta kya hai wo wo guzar jata hai aur achhe se guzar jata hai baki jo bhi hua jo bhi musibatein thi 
उन सबको से आपने जो सीखा अब वो सबके सामने रखना है तो मैंने यही किया बस आई जस्ट कैप्ट गोइंग आई ट्राइड माई आई ट्राई टू इन्वॉल्व माई सेल्फ इन पॉजिटिव स्टफ उस टाइम पे तो ये था कि नहीं पॉजिटिव ही रखना है बिकॉज तुमको पता है कि इसका अंजाम क्या हो सकता है तो अप हाँ जरूर से आएंगे नेगेटिव थॉट तो वॉट आर दिस वॉय टॉक्स फॉर गो फॉर फाइटिंग इंस्पिरेशन ये सारी चीजें हैं पढ़ने के लिए देखने के लिए तो उनको देखा जाए और उनसे देखा जाए कि नहीं असल में मतलब ये जरूर से जान ले बीमारी है बट इससे भी बड़ी बड़ी बहुत दिया सो मेनी मोर डिफिकल्ट थिंग्स इन लाइफ वी 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 हैवन विटनेस पीपल आर गोइंग थ्रू सो वी कोड बी रीड रीड ग्रेटफुल फॉर दिस लाइफ आज जब पलट के देखती हो यू कम दिस फार लाइक हाउ यू फील अबाउट इट I mean, it's so very far, but uh, even mid of the treatment, so like it's the fourteen days, I think thirteen days, you would feel on like top of the cloud because you are on your feet. You can actually drink water. Though the day, though the picture is different the next day when you get side effects of chemo, but once after the treatment, uh, I remember journaling once that it feels like magical. It feels like miracle to actually be able to eat, to drink. Water to not have weird sensation, so it has already started feeling amazing. And now, as I said, it was a year back. I was diagnosed the same month, and a year here, I did not even anticipate that I would be actually give him talk and be like saying, "Okay." That time it was dark, definitely dark, because they because we did not know where we are heading to. What is it? But as the time passed, we started to get to know the things. See, okay, so and so has happened, and my doctors have been very positive with me. In my case, they have been saying it's very much curable. You will have high chances and everything. So it feels. Good. good so there were no reason for me to not keep going i would say i mean there were all the reasons to wake up and i remind myself now the same thing i mean i have been through that so why not now so it definitely feels miraculous grateful for each each moment i would say not just a day but each moment of the day wow amazing i mean i see you you know i see an eagle you know a eagle who Ah, uh, like uh, is ready to soar. I feel that way. Yeah, and uh, I would like to say that as a warrior, what is your message to the newly diagnosed, especially your generation? Yes, yes. So again, my heart goes out to the people. I I actually came out of it very victoriously and all of that. That is the other thing. But not every circumstances, as I say, there are so many type of cancers. All cancer stages, everything is so different. So you hope. I think the second love and hope they are both the same thing. I would not even say hope as the second word. Where there is love, there is hope. There is hope. There is love. There is one thing we need to. This is like the strongest, strongest sources to keep going. So when you know you have it, do not lose hope. See love. See love in yourself. If it's not there, I mean. you can connect to nature the love is there in every form it's not does not have to be in human form and then i totally believe in it when you say that there is god on earth in human form they exist and when i say it's just not doctors but they are the people you meet through your journey like i have met so when someone is newly diagnosed i would say that please not lose hope learn and come in terms do not go in denial please accept acceptance is a virtue this is what i have realized because the earlier i did it the better it got i really really like i like i there were days where i used to have flashbacks okay one year back i was actually when i met this poor thing got done i was like and i wasn't able to move when anything i was like oh god what has happened to me there was year back i was moving i was i was actually doing everything and now i am this what is this life you would have such days but then think of the time and then you always have positive to switch around you have sun to look at you have air to breathe you have you have all of it around you you have poetry to read there are so many things do not give up do not give up and uh, and yes please talk about it to the people who have been through and do not have doubts do not google all of it because you prog- you google your prognosis prognosis and it gets much worse so you should hear your doctors and do as they say and then just keep the strength that will take you a long way i mean that these are the few things i always like kept in my mind positivity and be with your loved ones and do not go in any shell i mean that's uh, i mean there are so many things that happen to you but always look for the shine because in the end of the tunnel there is always light please have faith so uh, what i'll say ki the way you gave message to the newly diagnosed any message you want to give to the survivors okay i am being myself a survivor i have uh, i mean 
I I'll not go with that thing. Okay, always go back to the new normal. No, it is not. I I I also used to think that my life would be uh, the same as it was before, but it's not even a year of being done with the treatment. My life is much better than my previous life. Like after before cancer, I would say. I mean, I I struggled, but now. Uh, so there's so many things, but one of the learnings are true. So I used to have this long, th thick curly hair and all of that. So they were just, it was Sajanki, maybe her intelligence and then her hair. That is it. But uh, when during the treatment, I lost my hair, my brows and everything. So what was there to look for? But my people love me for who I am. So you, especially you yourself, have to keep this thing in yourself when you look into the mirror that you are so much more than your physical appearance. Yes, so that's one of the things I learned during the treatment, after the treatment also. So my this look is way much better than the previous one, I would say. Not just uh, with the outer appearance, but also inside. Because now I have the strength, the courage. I'm more empathetic, more understanding, and so much more than who I was. So I don't even know my limits. Like you said, I'm an eagle now. So I'm like a free bird. I don't even know where to find, how to, how much, because there is no limit. So that's how cancer and treatment has changed my life into. And now, yeah, I mean, if... Any and these are all the real, real, real things I have been through. I mean, not talking about something, but if it can move or tell, because people tell me now that yes, okay, whenever they think of tough time in their life, they're like, you can do it. I'm like, it's no parameter, of course. Even in my life, I'll have tough times. It'll be no parameter. But this is one of the toughest things I have been through and emerged and now thriving. So of course, this is one of the things that your life. They are they are better things to look into your life after you're done with the treatment. So think about it. I always were thinking, no, no, no. There will be time in February. I'm celebrating this festival, all of that. So this kept me good. Always think in a positive way, but not for a long future ahead. Think of it in the moment. And then I think you will be there more beautifully. Any message to the society as a survivor and a warrior? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in my case, I did not face so much of it but that's just one part very small fraction of the people i guess i have seen also there were few uh not many but you one thing as i said cancer patients and the survivors anyone do not want your sympathy or anything do not say hi kya ho gaya, kaise ho gaya. i mean do not like you know bring down their morale when you can boost it up i'm not asking for fake positive or anything but just do not say anything if you cannot do not ask like someone I actually encountered while in the hospital, there was a uh, uh, young in front of a father. I mean, I'm like, what are you like? Is that even for real? So you have to be also mindful. And uh, I think the one thing I left in the survivors thing was uh, do not talk about cancer, cancer all the time because you do not want to be reminded that if something so has happened to you. Instead, ask, okay, how are you doing today? And the things. So there are so many learnings. And when you ask about society, things so yes. And please be empathetic, empathetic. I mean, someone who has lost their hair. I mean, there are so many things. But give them weird stares and everything. Instead, be in solidarity, solidarity with them. Show some empathy. I mean, if you can. That's not so much to ask for. Be there to listen. Just try to understand. Because it's a real struggle. And not everybody gets it. And which is fine. But do not be judgmental in so many cases, especially with the cancer patients' cases. So, yeah, and do your part. I mean, please be there for your family, for your friends. I mean, taking a single minute in a day for a prayer or a message would not take a lot from you, but would mean well to the person who is going through so. So, please, please try to be in touch with the loved ones and also not just during the treatment, but after the treatment. They might miss, they might feel like so much, like, during the treatment, he I am again being blessed. I still have friends in touch going and asking. I am like, I can't communicate, give me some time. But in other cases, I have seen look, treatment khatam ho chhod dete hain aisa kaise ho gaya to aisa bhi nahi matlab keep in touch in general because there are struggles even after treatment we know how it is it shows ki we are medically fit but we know inside how we are feeling but again we adapt to it and then life becomes so much better than the previous one you are good on your own we do not want any of it but if you really ask ki ha sari kya kar sakte to please not ask for financial or anything but just be emotionally there because it's a very tough period they go through yes so much so as of now, what we've been talking about, your journey, your message, your experience. But as Suchanki, tell us something about you. Okay, so... Um, Who is Suchanki? 
you have said already so much about the things I do and stuff, but I'm a person who not just after, but before also, I have been this person who is very fun loving. I'll always smile to make others smile. I like I'm this person who would be very happy to go around. That's one of the my one of my side. I'm very extrovert. I make friends very easily. Like people also friends with me very easily. But again with it, I also have my sensitive side. And after cancer, I guess yes, during the cancer, I did not mention this. You have short-term tempers also. You have your things. So I want people to cope with that also because that's again a very difficult treatment process we are going so as a person as a person i'm very talkative and uh yes i mean i i believe in the power of hope i'm a very big time optimist people might think it's just she's just beyond but totally totally if i have come this long way trust onto me all of this because of hope i all i really really believe in the power of almighty and all of it like i know like my god will not bring me down at all and if something has happened he'll see to it so I'm a very firm believer of uh, all of this, like hope, strength, courage. This is the one thing, like the journey. But as a person also, I believe, I believe. If you believe, it'll happen. You have to make it happen. But believe in power of dreams, totally. I mean, uh, I, I think I might give a TED Talk. I might write a book. I might what? I will write a book. I will give a TED Talk. I'll go there for places for sure. And that's something I have in me. I haven't started any of it yet, but I'm very sure because yes, manifestation is a power. And uh, for some reasons, if I have got this, if I have recovered out of it, it's because of the belief I have had. So yes, it'll keep you going. So yes, I'm also this like I'm a I'm a dreamer than an then than an achiever. First I dream, then I work for it, then I achieve it. So yeah, I mean so I'll many say, things. I would say you are a visionary. Huh, we can say that. But now a short, a short way visionary. First, I think have five more plans and things. But now I'm like, okay, this day, this work, check, done. And even if not, do not take any load. It's okay. You are human. You're not a machine. I think one day at a time goes. Yes, you are a, not a machine, you are a human. Do that. Mm, yes. And all of this is secondary. Be 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 a human first and most of it. Like be there for your people, be there for yourself. And that's how you can be there for others also. But there are so many learnings, but this is one that if you can help yourself, then you can help yourself, then you can help yourself. Okay. So look into yourself, what can happen, what can happen, and do not hesitate to seek for help from others also. Yes, this is also another learnings I've got. Before we wind up, uh, anything else you would like to say out of your heart? I think I've said so much, and it's... Don't even take it as a fight. We will do call it warrior, of course, but it's also not a fight, you versus cancer or something, because love is a power. This is if you talk about who am I, though I did not have to say love because I am that. I totally believe in love and hope. So, yes, this is another thing. Do not take it as a junk. It's a game. It's a game. ये एक चीज हो गई इसके साथ साथ तो बहुत सारी चीजें हैं लेकिन इस समय जो मुझे याद आ रहा है और जो मैंने दिल से कह रहा है सिंदर रेन आउटसाइड आई वुड से व्हेन एवर इट्स स्टॉम डू नॉट वेट फॉर इट टू पास लर्न टू डांस इन द रेन दैट्स लाइक हाउ आई हैव बीन डूइंग इट सो यस आई वुड से टू एवरीवन हु इज फेसिंग एनीथिंग डिफिकल्ट इन लाइफ डू नॉट वेट फॉर दिस टू पास जस्ट बी हु यू आर एंड डांस इन द रेन लाइक डू एज मच एज यू कैन एंड बी योरसेल्फ एंड देन यू विल शाइन इवन आउटशाइन Beautiful. I, I'm so proud of you for being who you are, for being a uh, Suchanki LC, for uh, being an inspiration to upcoming generation. You are a fighter, you are a warrior, and you are an eagle for me because you are going to soar very high. I know that when an eagle is sick, he is able to take his hair out of his mouth. He is able to take his hair out of his mouth. and goes to the right place isolate and it waits for the new wings new feathers to come and once it grows back with the new strength with new jaise humne apne baal kho diye ki hum fir usse guzre in the same way i i see you that you are now back with the new strength your feathers are growing and you are ready to take so So I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for coming forward, Zuchanki. Thank you for Thank having you me. For being voice for the warriors, yes. voice for the generation who is 
young and going like you with the same battle. So thank you so much for being there, boys. Thank you for summing up so beautifully, also, and thank you for having me here. It was a pleasure to talk your heart, my heart out here.